Hey there, listeners. Looking to boost your sexual health and energy? Right now, Man TF Up is offering our listeners 20% off of your order when you visit mantfup.com slash unfiltered. You can also purchase Man TF Up on Amazon, get 20% off when you use promo code unfiltered. Don't miss out on this exclusive offer. Elevate your performance with Man TF Up today. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall and Filtered. Before I introduce my guest today, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors, Manscaped. Guys, summer is coming and you really want to take control of that body hair that you have let just get out of control over the winter. So go to Manscaped. They are the top of the game in men's body grooming. And if you use my code Holly, you get 20% off plus free shipping. That's manscaped.com. Use code Holly for 20% off plus free shipping. My guest today took a leap of faith and joined OnlyFans in her early 50s. Two months later, she quit her day job and has risen to become one of the most successful stars over 50 in the industry today. Let's welcome Elena St. James. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's so funny hearing my my story, but it's true. It's interesting, right? Like when you when you do these interviews and you get all like your little accolades kind of in that nice little sound bite. You're like, yeah. oh, wow, I have actually accomplished a lot in my life. Yeah. I mean, I know I have. That's one of the neat things about being my age and now I'm 56 um, is I think. God, are you? I am 56. Wow. Yeah, I just turned 56 you last month. Amazing. Thanks. Um, it's, you know, all my vodka um, that I drink. <laughs> And Look, I tried that route. I tried <laughs> drinking vodka for many, many years, and it did not do me any favor. No, I, actually, it's it's not that. I think, you know, part of it is I think it's my attitude, mm. seriously, and Botox and fillers. But, yeah, um, <laughs> <must be> real. <laughs> but also, I think having a child later in life, mm. there's something to that. I really do believe that because I had my kiddo when I was 42, mm. and um, there's something about being an older mom, but yet it, I think it keeps you young. At least for me, it did. That's so interesting because, you know, I had my daughter at 41. And actually, like, my skin, I mean, I was one of those lucky people that I got that pregnancy glow, and it kind yes. of stayed. Oh, that's good. Like, yeah. after I had her, like, my skin has been better ever since I had her and the Botox and the fillers. But, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I hear you. You know, there was – you know, I spent a lot of my youth, I got to do all the things that I wanted to do, get all that shit out of the way. And then like, you know, having a child later in life, I, same thing for me, like it was the best decision I ever made because yeah. I was ready. Right. And you had sowed your wild oats. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen, I'm sure some of your friends that had kids early, there's really never a perfect time, mm -hmm. but I always look at the silver lining and that's part of me, right? Mm -hmm. I've gone through a lot of like everyone does, a lot of challenges, um, some that are public, some that are not. And, you know, one of the really nice things about being an older mom is I've done all that stuff. Yeah. You know, like I didn't do it early, so I wasn't maybe, you know, as fun as running around. But I also had the resources, mm -hmm. um, especially now. Yeah. I didn't early because I made decisions to be with my son and I did in-home daycare. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have to leave him because it was like, I waited so long to have him. I went mm -hmm. through so much to have him. I didn't want somebody else with him all the time. Like I yeah. wanted, you know, and it was partly greedy. Like mm -hmm. I wanted, you know, I, I've heard you talk about just the little kid stuff and, and they do grow up so fast. And my son is now six, two, you know, <laughs> he's a giant, but he's still my baby. Yeah. You know, and I still can go back to that time when he was, you know, six months, whatever. And that, you know, I was, I was his world. So waiting longer, there are benefits to that. Yeah. There really are. Yeah. And I mean, it's a shame that you didn't have only fans back then. Cause for yeah. me, it's been such a blessing because I never had any plans on modeling nude ever. And if you guys have watched my podcast, you know, my story started off an accident, blah, blah, blah. I won't get into it. Um, 
but it has given me that extra income that allowed me to spend the time with my daughter that I wanted. Exactly. And like, I could have had pregnancy content, which that's a whole nother. Yeah, thing. I know. Right. <laughs> but I think like a lot of people don't realize, you know, they, they think about, they see all these women joining OnlyFans and, you know, there's a, so much stigma obviously against it. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh God, you're whoring yourself out on the internet and how terrible that is for you. But like for, for mothers, it's, it is such a blessing because that extra income that you don't have to leave your house for, like allows you that time to turn down other work so that you can spend it with your kid. Like that's what I did. I was able to turn down jobs I didn't want to have so I could be there um, and spend time with my daughter. And it's just like, it's been, that has like been the greatest gift of yeah. that platform for me. It, it is. The, my only regret is not knowing about it sooner. Yeah. Like I, it was 2021. Um, I was at my office job making like 30 grand a year. Yeah. And, and I literally saw an article and I thought, well, that's gotta be too good to be true. You know, like it's kind of like if you, way back in the day, mm -hmm. um, when there was, um, there'd be ads about like, you know, either massage parlors or private like lingerie modeling yeah. stuff. I mean, this is back like 80s, 90s. I remember my mom even saying like, and she was very conservative. She was like, what about this? You like dressing up. You like modeling. And I never could become a model because I was at 18 and 30 pounds less than I am now. I was too old, too fat for, cause obviously I'm tall, I'm 5'10". Um, but that's what I was told by modeling agencies mm. back in the mid eighties, yeah. too old, too fat. Um, <laughs> jokes on them. I, I know, make right? more money now with this older, heavier body than I ever would have dreamed of mm -hmm. back in 1985. Um, but my mom was like, Oh, maybe you should do this. And then two months later they get busted for being, you know, like, um, illegal, um, happy ending kind of massage mm -hmm. there, you know, place. So, but if I would have known about this earlier, I would have loved to have gotten into it. So I was sitting at my desk, taking a break, scrolling through, and I saw these one article and then another article about moms that were attractive, but they were in their forties and they were making six figures a month. And I thought that's got to be too good for to be true. This has got to be a scam. There's got, it can't be real. Mm -hmm. This can't be real mm -hmm. from their home. And I started obsessively in February of 2021 researching and doing all the stuff, uh, um, researching online, um, YouTube, everything to find out. And I was like, wow, this is real. This is real. So I started at the end of March, really April 1st was was no fooling was actually the day um that i went live on instagram was this 2002 2000 no 2020 i'm sorry 2021 oh 2021. 2021 so a little over two years ago um and i went live on instagram and then i started only fans and i was obviously analyzing everything i was doing i wasn't showing my face sometimes i'd show like from my lips down i can't even believe i got any subscribers i can't believe i got anybody to even follow me on instagram mm -hmm. quite honestly but um i the first two subscribers came in on i'll never forget it it was life-changing april 4th 2021 and it was a 28 year old and a 29 year old and i peppered them with questions i was just like really why are you here? Me? <laughs> Why? And I hadn't even, you know, shown my face. Well, what I realized later is um, because then I showed my face to them and they, and I said, so should I like show my face? Absolutely. They, sh you should. Mm -hmm. um, and by the end of April of 2021, I had 10,000 followers on Instagram and I think I had around 360 followers. So in a month you had 10,000. 10,000 on Instagram and I had about 360 subscribers on OnlyFans. Um, and I was, I was working all the time. I was going to my 40 hour. I was a single mom. I call it solo because I totally had my son on my own. Mm -hmm. So it was all me. And I was doing all of this plus, you know, the fur kids that I've got, um, our little zoo. And I, there was not enough time in the day. I was falling asleep trying to work fall with one eye open sort of thing. Um, so then when my boss at the office job kind of brought me in to say, hey, I didn't really like how you handled X, Y, Z. I started hearing wah, wah, wah. And I started going like, I am losing money sitting here listening to you complain about something that really wasn't 
you don't even know how it came down and, and you're off base and whatever the case is. I sat there and I looked at her. I was a month and a half in and I thought, I'm going to quit tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I just smiled at her. Listen, and I thought, I am going to go and write my resignation letter. And I did, because I knew I was leaving money on the table every day that I was going to work. Yeah. And I did. And two weeks later, June 1st became my first full day of um, OnlyFans. To backtrack, when those women were talking about that they were making over $100,000 a month, I thought, if I could make a tenth of that, mm -hmm. a tenth of that, it would be life changing for me and my son. It would change everything if I could just make a tenth. And I thought, I'm a tenth of as good looking as, as these women, if I could make a tenth. By the end of June, my first full month, full time, I had made $10,000 on OnlyFans. So it took me three months to get to that if I could. And then it's only gone up since then. Okay, so after that first month, you made ten thousand. Mm -hmm. um, you said that you were making thirty thousand a year overall before, right? At your office job. Yes. So, <laughs> I mean, talk about life changing. Yeah. I, I mean, okay. So also, let's let's go back to when you quit your job. Like, how did you feel about that? Were you scared? Were you like, did you ever doubt for a second that this was the right move, or did you feel very confident? There's a couple things. First of all, I think this is where being older helps. Mm. Um, I've always had an entrepreneur feel to me. Like mm -hmm. I, I went through a lot of infertility stuff and I actually tried to make that into some sort of kind of business to uplift and to inspire. And that didn't work. I've tried different things. Back in 95, I even had like this art that I was trying to sell art on the internet. This is when there was not, there was barely an internet, Yeah, but I was kind of on the forefront of thinking like, okay. And so I'm always had that entrepreneurship background. I've always been like, where's that idea? Actually, the funny thing is two months before I found this article on these creators on OnlyFans in January, I remember just being kind of at a low point, like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be working this kind of job and probably others until I die. Like I literally foresaw, saw if something doesn't come into my life, I'm going to be working forever. Now, before I had my son, I had a good job. I was, you know, close to six figures. I was in sales. I was national sales, but I had quit that to be with somebody that wanted me to be a stay at home mom and, you know, and that whole thing, life happens, right? So I left that career so I could really focus on that. That relationship ended. I became a solo mom. And then I just had these low paying jobs. And my thought was, I'm going to have like three jobs. I'll be the, I'll be the 70 year old woman that's working at Starbucks. And then I have an office job and I have this job. Also, I don't become a burden to my son. Like that was my biggest fear. And why did you feel like you couldn't go back to the career that you had before that you're making six figures at? Because I had been out of it for so long. Mm. I had been out of it for so long and I couldn't go back to it even with my son being, you know, like 11 at that time because I still would have to travel. Like that mm -hmm. was one of the reasons I couldn't do that and be a mom yeah. because of the traveling. I was traveling all over the United States. So, but with this, it was more like, I had asked for something to appear. And this is part of my message to people, to women, to men. It's like, just be open. Be open to when something is shown to you that that could be it. Mm -hmm. That could be it. And it could happen to you when you're in your mid-50s. It doesn't, 40, 50, 55, 60, it doesn't mean, doesn't mean you're gonna be an OnlyFans creator. OnlyFans didn't exist 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going to exist 20 years from now or five years from now, but something might appear. And if you feel it, like I felt it when I was reading their stories and the more I looked into this, I had that tingly feeling, you know, when you just feel like this is something. And I thought, that's it. Yeah. I have to make that work. If I get feedback that that's working and I did, and I did quickly, like, you know, when you're on a roll kind of, they talk about sports guys will talk about when they're in the zone. I felt I was in the zone. Everything lined up. I'd always been a ham. I had liked kind of the glamour modeling. I'd always liked entertaining. 
my idols growing up were Cher, Carol Burnett, Donnie and Marie, like these fun, but still beautiful, powerful Dolly Parton. Like those are my idols. So when I got into it and it became successful, even before I quit my job, which I thought I can get that kind of job again, like Mm -hmm. that one, I can get that kind of job again. So I wasn't really losing that much. I didn't have any benefits with that office job either. So it was low pain and there were no benefits. And I just had gotten enough positive feedback. I made almost on the first month with OnlyFans, I made almost what my monthly salary was at my office job for 40 hours a, uh, a week. So there were, it. I didn't jump right away. I jumped after it was a calculated risk. Mm-hmm. And I saw, I saw the writing on the wall and I yeah. knew this could be something. I also knew that like in August of 2021, OnlyFans said, we're going to take off all adult, you know, things. So that threw me, but yet I had to have in my faith that even though when that happened, and that was scary for a lot of creators, Mm -hmm. but I thought, okay, they're going to go, that void will go someplace. Mm -hmm. If they said that all horny men have been eliminated from the world, now I'm, now I'm in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) But a platform, they're still going to, be yeah. an outlet for horny guys. So was the fact, I mean, so you talked about, you know, getting into it because you enjoyed the idea of glamour. You like the idea of being fun. Did the fact that this was, I mean, it's adult work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, did that deter you at all? Or did you feel very comfortable with your sexuality and your body? Like how did that aspect, which is a big aspect of it. It's huge. How did that play into your decision making? Yeah, there's no going back. So there was a big, and really it was how does this affect my current? How does this affect my son Mm -hmm. going forward? Um, Those are all things that I had to think about. That was a big, that was the biggest part of the risk. I had always been comfortable, but I'll tell you, the funny thing is I wouldn't even send topless pictures to guys that I was dating. Like I wouldn't even do that because Mm -hmm. I just thought, well, what if that gets out? (laughs) And here I was like, here you go, everybody. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So It was a calculated risk. It was just part of it, though. So Mm -hmm. I'm pretty decisive, and I just went, okay. Yeah. uh, You know what? I'll have to deal with that. I might not be able to have other jobs in different areas ever again. But I'm old enough that, to me, I think it's different than if I was 25. If I was counseling somebody that was 25, I think I'd be a little bit more like, wow, you really have to think about this. Mm -hmm. For me, I was already 53, Mm -hmm. I had lived a life Mm -hmm. like I could take it. Were you concerned about your son? Yeah, I was. I mean, I talked to him a little bit about that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do sexy pictures. He doesn't, and he still doesn't need to know everything, but Mm -hmm. he he knows enough that he'll never be shocked. Mm -hmm. But I think the difference for me and him is we had already, we already had a different situation because he didn't have and doesn't have a dad. I used a sperm donor. So, you know, he's always had to deal with that, you know, like kids at school, like you don't have a dad. What is he in prison? You know, like, no, Mm -hmm. it's like, nope, I just don't have one. Mm -hmm. Um, So I've always had a very open relationship. So with him and communication. And I said, you know, if this happens, there's a chance that kids at school could say mean things. And, you know, what would you say? And, um, <laughs> and he was just like, basically he said, I, I would tell them off and say, it's none of their business. Okay. So yes. I mean, in a perfect world, would he, would I be doing maybe something where I kept my, all my clothes on? Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. But that's not the world that I was given. So yeah. this is, this is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is true. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, you recently started to do boy girl scenes for your OnlyFans. I did, which is so funny, by the way, <laughs> just that they're called boy girl. It's kind of where did that start? Yeah, you know, I don't know, and it's it's the it's a part of like the sex work vernacular that's just so ingrained, like in the brain, you know, the brains of someone like me who's been in the industry for so long that I don't even think about it. But I had King Noir on the other day, and he was like, "Yeah, why do we say boy girl? Like that's." <laughs> weird we shouldn't be using those words you know what i mean because right. it insinuates like children right it should be like man woman yeah and i was like i, I don't know Dude, chicky. i've literally like never thought about it um 
But uh, yeah, I mean, you're not you're not wrong about that. But okay, so scenes with men. How about yes. that? Yes. Well, <laughs> I was watching this podcast called Unfiltered. No, it wasn't. It was not. It wasn't all you. But you I mean, played you. Played you can a, give me all the credit if you want. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. You played a huge part in this. You played a huge part. So. Obviously, you might be surprised to know that guys like watching OnlyFans girls have sex. I know, shocking, right? But um, obviously, I'd been asked for ever mm -hmm. um, for that. Now, I had been single since 2020. Um, relationship ended, COVID. You know, he was a nice guy, smart guy, older, um, bad knees, bad back, which is plays into what I'll get into later. But, you know, the last two guys I'd been with were older, professional, smart, smart, funny, all good stuff, but they weren't porn stars by any means. Um, and I hadn't dated. And one time I did try to go on a dating app, um, probably 2021 later into 2021, because I was just like, and that was more just like, I would like to have human companionship yeah, in yeah, that yeah. way. Um, you know, I have all these guys lusting over me and here I am. Um, and somebody like said, oh, I had two guys. They're like, I follow you on Instagram. And that was weird because the power dynamic then. Yeah. So I know in this vernacular, we call them civilians. It's a weird thing. Like, how do you, you're either going to get somebody that is going to not respect and, and, or over sexualize what you do. And then that's going to be the focus. Cause I had that happen or um, they're going to be a fan. That's not good. Mm -hmm. Like I un understood all of a sudden why all of these celebrities only date other celebrities. Mm -hmm. I get it now. Mm -hmm. This little tiny microcosm little of being a little bit famous has told me so much. And I've actually gotten a lot of empathy for celebrities because I get it. I get why they go out and, you know, they're not looking around a whole lot and, and things like that. I've never been recognized in public that I know of, but that's just one of those things. So, um, so I kept getting asked to do boy girl. And I was just like, well, I don't know where I would find that person. So I'm single and I'm not dating. And so I started begging an old boyfriend that I was still friends with. And he was like, I don't know. I don't know. What if my kid finds out? What if my family finds out? And I'm just like, what if my, oh my back God. gives out? Right. What if my knee too? gives out? <laughs> oh, the whole thing. And he was just like, I don't know, maybe, but he kind of kept stringing me along. And then, um, finally a friend of mine that I knew had, she was overseas, but she had hired, um, a couple, um, London based porn stars, we were talking and she's like, maybe you should just go the professional route. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's not a bad idea. And here's why they know what they're doing. They sure do. They know what they're doing. I mean, I would tell guys that would, you know, be asking me, well, why don't you have? And I'm like, well, maybe because I've been celibate for, you know, at that point, almost three years. Um, and I'd be like, listen, you have to, you have to look the part. You have to have a certain look. You don't have to be, you know, perfect, but you have to, your, your penis has to be a certain size mm -hmm. just so that the they can see it, mm -hmm. you know, it has to function. It has to get hard. It has to pop. Yeah. Those are the requirements. And, you know, and if you can open up to the camera and do all those other things, like that's good too. But guys think that this is so easy and <laughs> they sure do. <laughs> and, and I watched a show, I think you were involved with that was, um, on one of the tube sites that was like a reality based show. Oh, digital playground, probably DP was a DP star. I don't know if it was DP star, but it was, or was um, it adult film school for playboy? Uh, it was with Kieran. Oh, that was DP star. Yeah. Yeah. So I watched, cause again, part of my research, I, I always research things and I was just like, yeah, look at this. These are a bunch of guys that think they want to be porn shows and they can't perform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so, okay. I was, then I have to do that. And I was watching your po podcast. I don't know when I oh, started watching it. No, it was okay. So it, I, I know what it was. It was um, I was in it for a second. I did the photography yeah, for yeah. it. It was called Sex Star or X Star. Horns, yeah, X X X, X Star. Star or something. something like that. It was right. like it was like a take on um, uh, like American Idol, but yeah, for that, porn. exactly right. It was Se the sex factor. The sex factor. That was That's it. what it was. Yes. And you were doing photography and I remember. Yeah. That show was watched... a fucking disaster. <laughs> I read about Oh that. my God. It was a nightmare. <laughs> I read 
what about that? But one of the things I so remember, unprofessional. I remember thinking I saw you during, and you were like, you are too bruised up. And to, to some gal that was on there. And I was just like, oh, she would hate me. I've always got bruises. But here's the thing though. Like this is actually what, and I, and I did. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it was, I also did DP star. Like I hate being a judge on these so shows. Wait, DP as in double D- penetration? No, 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 no. I know everyone thinks that digital playground. <laughs> Oh, the okay, company right. Digital Playground had okay. a show called DP Star. Okay. Um, and I was a judge on that. Ah. And then I was also like quasi judge. I did photo- I did a photography session that I also sort of judged um, for Sex Factor. Oh, okay. But I actually hated doing those because they make you out to be mean. Because you have, have to, to say things to people to like create drama. And so, yeah, like they, I come off like kind of a dick and I'm actually not like that at all. And um, after uh, – one of the scenes on DP star, I like cried. I was like, I can't do this. I'm like, you're oh. making me make people feel bad. You're making me like make girls cry. I'm like, this is not who I'm about. Yeah. Like I actually was, I was not happy with that. Yeah, no. And you know, it's funny side note. Like I didn't know what SPH meant. Yeah, that's um, small penis. Oh, small penis. Humiliation. Right. And I remember having to look that up or whatever, talk to one of my friends that are in the business. And, um, and I have a hard time doing even that kind of yeah. stuff, you know? So, um, but yeah, the boy girl. So I decided for many reasons that a pro was the way to go. And, mm-hmm. and I, I was like, Oh, but I'm not really attracted to a lot of these guys, but I'm, you know, I'm picky. Um, and I've never, I've always was, a relationship girl. Like Mm -hmm. I didn't just sleep with anybody. I didn't just have one night stands. I didn't like, I, I needed to feel something for someone, but I was like, but this is a business. And so I vacillated back and forth. Do I do it? Do I not? And for a while I was like, you know, it'd be great. This would be a great reality show. Why don't they have me as like a really old OnlyFans creator that wants to have her first boy girl scene. And then I will test them out. (laughs) <laughs> and then and you could have like, it could be called stud boss and I could have all these guys <laughs> and I could test them in different ways, like making out with them, going out for lunch, you know, like doing these, checking out their goods. Like I thought that is a compelling show that not only would guys watch, but women would watch that too. Yeah. And I thought this is such a great idea. Nobody liked it. I, I couldn't get anybody interested. You know, I have a publicist and I was just like, shop this around. And he's like, yeah, nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> So I still think it's a good idea. Mm-hmm. I still think it would be compelling. And I still think you'd get the females to watch it, mm-hmm. whereas porn is obviously so male dominated. Yeah. But anyway, I started watching a lot of porn. Um, not as necessarily enjoyable as one would think, but mm-hmm. I just kept going like, okay, who are hot? Who's somebody hot? I, just, I need somebody hot. Like, if I'm going to do this, yeah. and if I'm going to pay them yeah. to do this with me, which is so weird as a woman mm-hmm. anyway... Um, but I wanted to own it. I didn't want to collab. I yeah. wanted to own it because um, I wanted to have control. And um, I saw Ryan um, Driller, and I was just like, oh, Superman. And you know? he is and, he's handsome. And he, not only that, though, he's funny. Yeah. He's kind of like the Cary Grant of porn. Mm. You know, like he's super handsome. He's got the presence, but he's funny. Yeah. Like he's charisma. Like yeah. he's got that. Mm-hmm. So I liked him and, you know, I saw some others and then I saw a friend of mine um, had a huge crush on Lucas Frost and, but yet she had no intention of, of filming with him, but she was like, oh my God, you should check him out. He's really hot. And I talked to somebody else that had filmed with him. Who's also an OnlyFans creator. His name came up. Um, so his name had come up a few times. So I watched and then it was right around that time he had done your podcast mm-hmm. and you had said something to him and it was, it could have been, it could have gone bad. Like he could have come off as a real jerk. It was in his hands. Right. But you said something like, what happens if you're not attracted to somebody mm-hmm. and you have to film with them? Mm-hmm. What if they're just, and he hesitated and you pushed him on it. And you're like, you know, like say if they're really mean, if they're really being bitchy. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I find something that's good about them. I find something that I like about them. Maybe it's their smile or, you know, that they're kind or, you know, whatever. Like he, he came up and I thought that tells me he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. Like that tells me he's a good person and that he's, you know, thoughtful. And that 
shed so much light. So I reached out to him. And now I will tell you, I reached out to a few other guys in the industry that I never heard back from. Mm -hmm. Um, But he, you know, he said, well, here's my scene, right? Blah, blah, blah. And he was very, and I was fine with that. I was Mm -hmm. fine that he was very matter of fact, because this is a business and that's fine. And I was like, that's fine. You know, because I think one of the things that porn guys don't understand is how much money OnlyFans girls make. Mm. I don't think they really understand it. Or I think they think with their dicks. Mm -hmm. I think they look and go, oh, look at that hot one. But they don't look and go, as a business person, would Mm -hmm. they be like, what's her social media? Mm -hmm. What's her standing on OnlyFans? What's her fan count? Like, how is this business going to help me? Mm -hmm. Right. Like I have a publicist. I knew that whoever's going to film with me is going to get a tremendous amount of publicity because I'm going to push the heck out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like so somebody that was thinking with that in their mind would have gone like, okay, this is a good business opportunity for me. I don't know if that figured into his decision or not. He agreed to it. He came out to the Midwest in the middle of winter when it was really cold. Poor thing. I mean, I was just like. Wow. I was like. You... So he came out to you oh, to film. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Both of them did. Um, yeah. So he came out and it was cold. I mean, and he's from like California. You yeah. Know, he's a California, but he was never complained. Although I was just like, it's, I mean, I don't know. I, it might have even been sub-zero. It was really cold, mm. but it's fine. And, you know, I met him and I was nervous because, again, I'm just a regular person and he's mm. a porn star and he yeah. has been with all the top talent, yeah. you know, like all the top talent. And I didn't know what I, what I was doing. I mean, I really didn't. I was like, you know, I mean, heck, it had been three years since I had had sex. I almost didn't know how to have sex. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I did. But you yeah, know what I, I mean? Understand. It's like I was like, well, this is like from driving a Taurus to driving a Maserati. Yeah. You know, like this is the difference. This is pro. Um, so it was weird and I was nervous, um, but I just did it. You know, I just, we did it and we filmed it and I giggled and, and I just kind of laughed, but that's naturally who I am. Mm-hmm. My fans loved it. They loved it. They loved, they loved him. They were like, you know, he's a pro. You can tell he's a pro, but he guided you and he was, you know, he was, he was good with you, but you were having fun Mm -hmm. and your smiles and your authenticity, which is what they like about me anyway, Mm -hmm. was coming through. Um, I mean, obviously he's in way better shape than I am. And that was intimidating. You know, it was lovely in a very much like, Oh, look at her. Aren't you pretty? You know, it's like, ah, aren't you pretty? Like all these abs. I can't even count that. I don't even know. He is very regimented too, like in what he yeah. eats and working out. And he, he's a personal trainer. I think he still does. He does. Training too. Yeah. yeah. Fit by Frost is it's on, mm-hmm. his, on his Instagram. Yeah. I mean, he's in crazy shape. Yeah. Um, so it was more just like, look at this. Yeah. Um, But it was really, so it was good and fun. And it was strange though, you know, like when I took him back to the airport and I was, I was just like, well, first of all, just walking around and with him and being like, (laughs) me, this guy, you know, like we kind of walked around a little bit and, and he, and I was like, you know, do you ever get recognized? And he goes, usually, no, he goes, sometimes when I take off my shirt and I'm just like, okay. Well, don't take off your shirt. What did I do? Like, <laughs> Imagine what happens when he takes off his pants. <laughs> I think I think that would be it, right? I mean, that would be it. Um, so that was that was awesome. And then I had already talked to Ryan, and that so my collab with Lucas went so well that I was like, well, I mean, hey, hey, hi, yeah, <laughs> want to come out to yeah. the Midwest? And he was like, sure, hundred percent, let's do it. And I was like. Oh, yes. And so I had filmed two scenes with Lucas. I ended up filming. <laughs> I got greedy. I filmed four with um, Ryan over the course of a couple of days, and it was fantastic. I mean, while he's out there, get that uh, done. I, and he could do it. I was just like, yeah. You know, the funny thing is he has his own toy, right? Mm-hmm. This was the funniest thing. And this is the, the, I had this concept because he had his own dildo. And I was like, 
and I bought one and um and I thought this would be great for the prop and I had asked him have you ever used it or have used it as a prop or anything like in a scene and he was like um no I've never actually seen it and I was like oh my god oh, this is awesome so the first video that I released with him it was called the magic dildo and the whole little setup was that I was looking at it, I was like I wish it was real oh, I wish it was real and then I had him come out in a towel and sitting out down next to me he goes hey why not have the re real thing yeah or something like oh my that. god that's and so I was cute like, oh my god <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, it was so cute. And he was so good with it. And I'm like, yeah. this is really you? And he goes, yes. And I'm like, how did you get it? Like the whole thing. And he played it off great. But he literally was like, I've never, I mean, literally, he was like, I've never seen, I've never held it. And I was just like, well, this there is you. And I compared it. <laughs> I love it that. It was so fun. Oh my yeah. God, so, so I mean, we'll see when or if I do another one. I don't know. You know, uh, they've they've all done well. If you need recommendations, oh, we can talk. I can, I can give you recommendations. Yeah, I definitely. I've got my favorites. Oh, yeah, and, and so. for so for me, it's safety. Yeah, I don't think that course. people understand because I'm all about testing. You know, because 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 we know we know yeah. why it's the so it's it's not only the testing. I also I'm not somebody that likes rough sex. Mm -hmm. I understand there are some. Mm -hmm. I get it. I understand there are some women that really like it. I understand this is like a trend yeah. in porn, but I don't want my hair pulled. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be slapped. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I don't really like my ass slapped. Um, and I definitely don't want to be choked. Yeah. You know, like that's not what I like mm -hmm. at all. Um, but it's very common, you know, and it's aggressive. And just as a woman kind of concerns me that that's kind of part of porn. I'm saying that though, I do understand that some women like that, mm -hmm. but it does concern me a little bit just as a woman that that's so prevalent. And I, I do have my own theories about why mm. that's prevalent. I think as women gain power, um, society wise, I think there might be an attraction to putting them in their place a mm -hmm. little bit. I don't know. That's just mine. Yeah. I mean, though, I will say also to some of the most powerful performers that I know, like rough sex. I also, I also feel like as well, I mean, not to get too, too deep into it. Cause there's other things I want to talk about, yeah. but, um, I think also too, when you work in porn for a long time and you have sex with, for a living for a long time, you start to push the boundaries a little bit in order to That's like keep that interest and keep that edge. Yeah. You know what I mean? To keep, yeah. To because keep you get like, you know, I mean, you if you're going to have a hand, exactly. If yeah. you're going to have like scrambled eggs every day for breakfast your whole life. I don't know, maybe in a couple of years you want to throw some spicy salsa on it. Yeah, that's interesting. That you know? is an interesting perspective. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we will be right back. Are you looking to unleash the alpha within? Introducing Man TF Up, the ultimate natural testosterone enhancement supplement that will take your sexual health, libido, stamina, and energy to new heights. Man TF Up understands that every man deserves to feel confident and empowered in the bedroom. That's why they've developed a powerful formula using the finest natural ingredients that are scientifically proven to boost testosterone levels without any harmful side effects. Man TF Up can not only increase your sexual wellness, but also amplifies your overall energy and stamina, helping you conquer your daily challenges with vigor. Whether it's at work, in the gym, or pursuing your hobbies, Man TF Up gives you the extra edge to perform at your best. And here's the icing on the cake. Man TF Up is proudly made in the USA, adhering to the highest quality standards and rigorous manufacturing processes. You can trust that every bottle of Man TF Up is safe, reliable, and effective. Ready to level up your performance? Right now, Man TF Up is offering our listeners 20% off of your order when you visit mantfup.com slash unfiltered. That's M-A-N-T-F-U-P dot com forward slash unfiltered for 20% off. You can also purchase Man TF Up on Amazon. Get 20% off when you use promo code unfiltered. The links are in the episode's description. Don't settle for anything less than the best. Man TF Up and seize the moment. Hey guys, we are back. 
So Elena, um, you wrote in the Huffington Post that your mom always said that women become invisible to men after they turn 45 and that you always believed her. Um, now you've proven that this isn't true. What has your experience with OnlyFans taught you about self-love and embracing your body and age? You know what? It has really taught me so much because I really did believe, again, living and growing up in the Midwest, um, I think it's even more reinforced that you, you know, you just wear your lands and clothes. I love lands and, <laughs> but, um, you know, you just kind of wear your dowdy t-shirts and you get heavier and you don't wear, and I, I don't even wear that much makeup when I'm not on camera, but, um, and you just let yourself go. Right. And what this taught me. It's like you've served your purpose as a sexy woman you're not, to right. have children, think, create a family, and right. then like no longer, that's over no longer 40, a thing. I mean, I, that's what I was told. Like you're over 40, you're just not a sexual person anymore. Mm -hmm. It's done. You don't get noticed, sorry. Um, you don't get noticed by men. Um, and I mean, the bottom line is obviously I got noticed by men and I got noticed by young men. I got noticed by most of my core demographic is between 20 and 40. That's most of my of my subscribers that have an older woman fantasy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was it was great. I knew that I'd be a niche somehow. Um, but to find out that there was this huge older woman niche, that was the surprise. That was what was surprising. You can call it MILF, mature, whatever, but that there was this huge fantasy about it. And I provide a fantasy for these men that are younger. They're probably dating age appropriate women. And that's cool with me too. Like, yes, you know, do that. But that's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. You can fantasize about an older woman. So what it really did is it was the age and it was also the body positivity that came out of this because I like to eat and I don't like to work out. So those things, you know, don't help, you know, if you want a slim, trim, tight body, you know, but my guys like that. Mm -hmm. Like everything that I kind of disliked about my body for many years are what make guys love me. Like, they like my mom tummy. They like that I have cushion here. They like the love handles. They like the cellulite. You know, they like that my boobs aren't perky. It's, it, it is mind boggling, but it's something that I wanna share with so many people out there that are striving for perfection and be like, listen, there are women that are on OnlyFans that have gorgeous bodies perfection. Like I look at them and go, look at that. Look at that butt and the boobs and the face. And it's just gorgeous. And I'm making way more money than they are. <laughs> what does that tell you? Yeah. Tells you authenticity, being genuine, attitude. It, re it really works. And I don't know if that's the generation of the 20 and 30 year olds. I'm not sure if there's just there's more perfect girls out there than there are me out there. So just the rarity of that makes it special. But like if anyone's thinking like, oh, you know, I have cellulite. Oh, I have this like, oh, no, I'm t I am the living example of why being perfect. It's so reverse, right? It's reverse of what we think it should be. Mm. But it actually makes you who you are like those things about you, you know, the stripes, tiger stripes, you know, the everything of being a mom, that your body, I mean, it was renovated. My kid was almost 10 pounds. Wow. My body was renovated. Um, but those things that changed in my body are what the guys love. When I've talked about getting like liposuction or a tummy tuck, um, usually if I mention that on my, on my OnlyFans, they're like, don't you dare. Yeah. Don't you dare. Or they'll talk about like, oh, yeah, well, put me over the edge. Like, you know, when they're aroused mm -hmm. and stuff is when you showed your stomach. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've had a kid and you might be in perfect shape. I don't I, know. I am not. You were, clothed, <laughs> you were clothed when I got here, so I'm not sure. But, um, but I mean, my stomach is not something I'm necessarily proud of, you know? No, mine's definitely not what but it once was. But the guys are like, oh, my God, your belly button. I'm like see my belly button, but okay. Yeah. 
it's crazy, right? I mean, it's for, it's, I think, you know, I want to go back to what you said about authenticity. And yeah. I think that that's actually one of like the secret sauce to OnlyFans mm -hmm. because what OnlyFans is, is it's not so much just like the sexy photos and the sexy videos and all that kind of stuff. Obviously that's a big part of it, but it's the connection that these people feel like they have with their favorite creators. And look, like, let's be honest, like a lot of you know, our subscribers or our fans are not necessarily like per perfect physical specimens themselves. Well, mine are. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like all of those things that we hate so much about ourselves because it doesn't make us perfect, I think makes us feel more attainable to them. Like yes. this is a woman that I could actually probably date. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? And it's not somebody who you know, like a Mia Malkova, who's like never going to like look my way. And I, know, and I, I wish she could be successful. And you know, if she just gained some pounds, yeah, I'm Mia's teasing, doing, obviously. Mia's doing terribly. <laughs> poor Mia. Poor Mia. <laughs> poor poor Somebody Mia. Somebody buy her a cheeseburger. Or yeah. Six. God, just, she's really struggling out there. <laughs> No, but I mean, I'm seriously, there, there was a girl I just did a shout out with, um, and I couldn't believe her percentage, which indicates how much money, mm -hmm. um, they're making. Cause I was like, oh my God, she's just freaking gorgeous and perfect. And I'm like, and I am blowing her away money yeah. wise. Yeah. So yes, there's that authenticity. One of the things that I do, Holly, is I do something called, um, chat and flash and it has become very popular and anybody listening, do it. Cause you're not, you, you might be not really copying me, but inspired by me, you do it. Everybody do it. Cause the guys love it. And what it is, is every week at a certain time, they know that I will have uploaded a video of me chatting with them where I just start out whatever I happen to be wearing. And it's usually my mom, you know, stuff. So it's a tank top and shorts or leggings or whatever. And what I end up doing is I just start talking like this and I ramble on as women can do, do my little monologue and what's going on. Like, oh, and then this happened and then this happened and blah, blah, blah. And then I take off my top and I take off my bra if I have that on. And I start, you know, just kind of playing with my boobs as I'm talking. And are you acting like sexual in any way? No. Or is it, you're almost like, like this is normal. Like yeah. almost like I'm getting changed for bed or something. Yeah. I'm yeah. Okay. I'm talking. You, you know, you, you, whoever. Um, but they're watching me and I'm just talking to them and I'm just kind of like, you know, doing that, playing with my boobs a little bit. Cause you know, they're nice. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's, but it would be kind of like if, if you were talking to, you know, a boyfriend, husband, whatever, and you were getting ready for bed and you were talking about your day and you were just like undressed and you were topless and you're playing with your boobs, not sexual. I never am like getting turned on mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's very wholesome. And then I'll be like, okay, bye, you know, after 10 minutes and they love it. They wow. wait and they can't wait because sometimes, literally, sometimes I can be bitching about other, like, I'll be like, then this guy sent me an message. I'm like, don't be that guy because I restricted him. Do not be that guy. Or, you know, I'll be like, I have something fun that's coming up. Like mm -hmm. if I tape something or I'll talk about, you know, going to a new movie or I'll talk about, you know, going to a restaurant or I'll be like, oh my God, I hate the snow. I had to shovel like whatever's whatever it mind. is. Yeah. Whether it's something that's coming up or not. But again, authenticity. Yeah. They love it. I went through my, um, a couple times I went through my like kind of slut closet with all my slut clothes. I don't know if, if you separate your <laughs> lingerie. And so I call it my slut closet. So, like, you know. yeah, I don't have too much. I have an entire slut like room, but <laughs> it's, room. but it's for, room. but it's for shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like I have so much wardrobe I've right. collected from the 23 years that I've shot other women. Yeah. So most of it doesn't fit me, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, yeah, I only I don't have that much laundry. I have like a couple of pieces. But, yeah. Well, yeah. I have I have enough. Whether it's dresses I would never wear out in public, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. I'm just not going to do that. Yeah. But yeah, but they love it. Chat and flash. And so um, when and I'm going to do a takeoff on that with, with my own podcast, um, chat and laugh, because that's what I'm known for. I'm known my brand. When people have asked, what's your brand? I'm like, my brand is, um, big boobs, big natural boobs and a smile. Yeah. Like that's it. And when I've made the porn with these porn stars, one of the things that was an overriding is how much the guys loved 
that it made them feel good. They're like, you know, sometimes porn can make me feel bad Mm -hmm. or dirty or bad. You bring the joy into having sex. Yeah. Like this is the way sex should be where you're laughing and giggling and talking with a partner, but it's still hot and you're both getting off, but yet Mm -hmm. you, you've got this joy about it. Yeah. And part of my joy was just like, Oh, I get to have sex with these two, you know, like (laughs) my God. So, um, I also want to talk about, uh, your niche. Now, when you initially started out, you thought that your niche was going to be the mature dominatrix, which is powerful and elegant, but that didn't end up being what your followers wanted. What niche have you leaned into now? Is it the natural boobs and a smile niche? Yeah. So is it just like the kind of Midwest mom kind of Midwest, Midwest mom, fun, nice, you know, a little quirky, but Mm -hmm. smiling. Um, I mean, one of the reasons I smile so much on camera is because I look probably like Beatrice Arthur, you know, when I'm not smiling, just some kind of old. Um, so of course I have to smile Mm -hmm. because I look better that way. Plus I also smile on camera because I can't believe I get to do this. Yeah. And I'm paying, and people are paying for me to do this. It's crazy. But yeah, because I do have a strong, when I'm in a relationship, I have a strong dominatrix kind of thing, but it's always been more playfully wicked. Like I had a past uh, relationship. He was very, very high powered, even more high powered now, but very high powered guy, very smart. But like a lot of those guys, he really wanted to be submissive in real life. And so I wouldn't do anything to hurt him, but I'd tie him up and I'd do wacky things or I'd like, you know, make him come out a window or something. Um, and he'd be like, Oh, I can't believe you're making me do this. You know, or (laughs) come on, right. Don't tell God, don't make me do this. And I was like, you're going to do it, you know? And then I'd laugh about it. So I have that strong side, but it wasn't embraced. Uh, anytime I've tried to do any of that kind of dominatrix stuff, even in a playful manner, my guys don't like it. Mm. Some do, but I mean, I would say 99.9%. They like when I'm just more wholesome. They don't even like me with a lot of makeup. Mm -hmm. You know, like I took pictures around my house one time where I was like, okay, I'll take pictures kind of doing the laundry. Hi, I'm naked in my house because I'm alone, you know, having a Cheeto. Um, (laughs) I took a picture topless with a Cheeto or like a cup of coffee or something in my kitchen. Just like, okay, I'll take one here. Mm-hmm. They loved it. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. Real, natural, attainable. Mm-hmm. You know, even though I'm not, because I'm online fantasy entertainment only. Right. But um, but it's still, it's that fantasy that I'm just the mom next door and I'm the nice, and I really am too, though. I'm that nice person that they would see at the grocery store that would thank them for opening the door for me, mm-hmm. you know? I'm, do you have guys like confide in you about stuff about their personal life or ask you for advice with dating or anything like that? Like, do your conversations with your fans go beyond the sexual? Well, yeah, they always go beyond the sex because I'm I don't really engage. I did some sexting for a while, but I stopped. Um, I it's always a balance, and you have fans too, so it's always the balance. Because what I've found that if I don't set a boundary, you know, I. I, I I can get guys that kind of fall in love and it's that fine line of, I want them to like me and I like them, but there is a, there's a boundary. There's a boundary. Yeah. Uh, This is a business for me. And I always, and they don't always like it when I remind them that this is a business, Mm -hmm. but I do. And if that loses me some, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Like when I do dick rates, I don't pretend that I'm all turned on by seeing dicks. I don't push the dick rates. I'll do it. How honest are you about the dick rates? I'm very honest because first of all, what I always say is I say, first of all, it's a keeper because they all are, because what are you going to do? And that's part of me being older is just like, this is silly. And I tell them it's silly that you're asking me to rate your dick. There's nothing that you can do for it. Number one, what's more important is the man attached. Oh, I do the same thing. Because I would rather be with a guy with a substandard penis because like I know what a good penis is sure but it doesn't matter if you're a jerk yeah I don't care a nice dick attached to a jerk is still a jerk right yeah Yeah. it's like I mean you know you give me a geek with a little penis I'm fine with that because if he makes me laugh 
mm-hmm. and he makes me feel good about myself and he's reliable. Cause I'll tell you what, to me, especially being older, especially being a mom, the most sexy thing you can be in my life as a man is be reliable. Do what you say you're going to do. <laughs> I, know. I feel you so hard on that. Oh my right? God. Like one of my favorite thing, you know, people ask me, what do I love the most about my husband? And you know, there's a lot of like great things about him, but like for me, it really is that he's just like a good man and he's solid and he does what he says he's going to do. Yeah. You can depend and he, on him. And I can depend on him and he, like we'll follow through on stuff and he'll do stuff for my mom and he'll take care of our daughter and like just these, these things, you know, like, Oh my God, that's just, it's, it's everything. Right. And then you talk about a dick and it's kind of like, I don't know, can you rate my toe? I mean, it doesn't matter. (laughs) You know, it doesn't matter. I, Oh my gosh. The one thing though I had the, so I'm very honest and I don't pretend I'm getting turned on by seeing it. I do. I'll be like, well, here's the deal. Like, you know, you, your, your, your strong suit is your girth. You know, like I'll say, like, the girth is really good. Not so much length. But then I'll say this is the ups and downs. I always go to the manscaping. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll oh, say, yeah, they- like, if you need to do that, I will always bring that up. Or I'll be like, you know, nicely done. But as a woman, I don't know. You're a photographer, so maybe you do this too. I look at their surroundings. Oh my God, yes, I'll be 100%. Like, I'll, be, I'll be like, you might want to pick that joint up a little bit. Like, yeah. I'll notice like dirty clothes oh, or whatever. Yeah. And and I tell guys this all the time, and it's so funny because I've had this conversation with so many other women who also do dick ratings. Yeah. Like, the environment is very important. Yeah. We look at that. If your room is a fucking mess, yeah. if it looks like you haven't done your laundry <laughs> or like washed your bed sheets, I'm not even getting into that room for you to even be able to pull your dick out. I'm not seeing like, your dick. We're never going to get to that point. Right. So pick up your fucking room. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, well, I, even as somebody that is, is, um, professionally trained at looking at dicks, um, <laughs> even at, I am distracted by stuff in the background. I'll yeah. be like, Oh my God. Or I'll be like, Oh, well that's nice. You yeah. know? But, and the funny ones, how about the guys that just pull it out of whatever they're wearing? Yeah. Like they pull it out of their shorts or whatever. And it's just like, Okay. Or they're on the toilet. Oh, God. Why yeah. would you do that? Why? To us. Like, I know you're <laughs> taking a shit, dude. <laughs> right. Why? Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Even I, there was one guy who sent me one and he had like a guitar in the background and he had like okay, a that's interesting, he had like right? a CD collection. And I was like, oh, you're a musician, <laughs> you know? And then I think about like after we have sex, maybe you'll like play me a song, like See? stuff like that. Because that's the difference between women and men. Yeah. That's the difference. And this is what I point out to them. I'm like, listen, your dick size, I mean, it matters. It mattered when I was hiring porn stars to some degree. You know, it it, It matters matters matters. when you're cultivating a fantasy. It matters when you're doing business. Right. But these guys are not asking. Well, some of them are asking if they could be a porn star. But I think a lot of them just want to know, like, could I satisfy a woman? Am I good enough? Am I good enough? Well, a lot of these dick pic ratings say to me is, am I good enough to be worthy of love? Right. Or am I going to be, are they going to make fun of me when they see my dick? Yeah. And I mean, I've only seen one where I was like, wow, that's that's a gorgeous dick. Was Mm -hmm. it the guys? I don't know. But, um, and I've only seen a couple where I'm like, well, that's unfortunate, but I hope he can, (laughs) I hope he can go down on the woman. That's the other thing. Mm -hmm. If a guy has good oral skills. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Because a lot of us, skills. a lot of us can't come from penetration. I'm one well, of them. I'm just who I honestly, as a woman of this age, I don't know who can't, who doesn't need at least some clitoral yeah. stimulation as well. Mm-hmm. But it's like, oh, that, that was the one thing. Oh my God. The two porn stars that I was with. You might be surprised that they knew what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was like. I mean, you did hire professionals. I mean, I expected the dick action to be on point. Their oral action, I was like, oh my God. I mean So let me let me ask you then. (laughs) What do you think makes a good lover? Uh it's attentiveness. Mm -hmm. And well, there's lover and then there's somebody that you're gonna have sex with. I mean, both Ryan and Lucas are fantastic and they're 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 good. Now, for me, 
a lover means that there's emotion and that's somebody that I can have sex with and laugh with. And then we're going to eat ice cream in bed together, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and then, you know, and then there's feeling there and he's saying things about me and, you know, I'm saying things about him and that I, this sounds really hokey, but I see that there's a future of some kind, but there's an emotional connection. Like, so that's lover having somebody to have sex with. I'm sorry, I just hit that again, um, is, I mean, it's it's being present. Mm-hmm. You know, the better scenes that I had out of the six that I filmed were when the person and I were just, the guy and I, were just really in sync. And I could tell. You know, we were in the zone and we were in it together. There was... There wasn't this thing, and I've seen it in in porn too, where you can a guy is a little bit checked out, you know. Mm-hmm. I can tell that. And when you're in the scene, and I've talked to other porn performers, and we've talked about that too, but it's it's just being present, you know, being present and being caring about the other person. I think that's I think that's the rule of life. Yeah. In all relationships. Yeah. So do you ever see yourself doing studio porn? Do you think you're only going to shoot for yourself or your OnlyFans? Um, only if Holly Randall would be the <laughs> director, producer. No, I mean. There you go, people. <laughs> I'm very specific. Um, maybe. I see it. Um, you had mentioned um, Cherie. Mm-hmm. Is that pronounced? Cherie, yeah. Um, and I'm a huge fan of hers. Her reading of her DMs. Yeah. I've told so many of my fans, like, you got to, because it's hilarious. Yeah, she's very funny. She's very funny. But she has talked about one of the reasons that she does studio work Mm -hmm. is for the advertising of her brand. That would be a reason. Mm -hmm. As a business person, it makes sense. That would be a reason for me to do studio work. What I would be worried about is not having the control Mm -hmm. that I do when I hire the male talent, um, that I have control about everything. And they're usually, they've, they've been so lovely about like, you just tell me what to do. And I'm like, I will. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like that. Um, that would be a little disconcerting, um, not being able to choose who I film with because I am so sensitive to wanting to be with, you know, mm-hmm. whoever I want to be with. Right. Um, I, I think that would be really disconcerting if they'd be like, and here's this guy. Yeah. I mean, it, be with. it depends on the brand that you work with. I mean, I can tell you for sure. Like, I mean, for the last few years, I've only worked for mind geek and I've worked for mind geek for like over a decade. Um, I can tell you for sure that they would absolutely let you choose the male talent. They're really good about that. Other brands would probably, you know, I mean, especially if they wanted you bad enough, they would let you do that for sure. I suppose, yeah. Um, so Chris Hemsworth, in that case, would be my number one. <laughs> he doesn't even, you don't even have to have a big dick. <laughs> it's okay, Chris. Care. You can have a micro penis as long as you're good at oral. You know what? He doesn't even need to stick it in me. I'm there you fine. go. Chris Hemsworth? He can just, he be, can, can he just stand can there just, and just oil his body up? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's no, all he, we no, need. No, he, I'd like him to touch me. Oh, okay. Oil your body up. Yeah, but we could just kiss. <laughs> I'm not I'm not too choosy. <laughs> no, but so yes, maybe. You know, like it's something I haven't done. I'd be kind of curious. I am curious about it, especially, you know, if they could light me and and you know and make sure that my it's funny, I again I watch your podcast all the time and I saw um Julia Ann and I just I felt for her because yeah. she's younger than me. But um, but not a tremendous amount. But she was talking about like that she's not doing boy girl stuff, and she's like, you know, because when you're with a guy, they're just like pound pound pound, and your body is going in all different ways. And I was like, I hear you. Yeah, I hear yeah, that. Yeah, no, I get it too. I get that. Um, so I totally understand. And I love, by the way, I I, I love that you have a wide variety of talent, male, female, but older and younger. Like the older talent, I'm just it's almost like I want to write notes because Mm -hmm. they have such interesting life perspectives Mm. that they can offer. And it's always interesting too, when you have like real moms, because one of the problems with working for a studio would be like, well, okay, 
where does what how does this affect my kid? Not mm-hmm. in the stigma part of just like just practicality. Like, mm-hmm. where's my kid go? Yeah. You know, like right now I'm here. Thankfully, I have a friend and he's having a blast. I'm sure he's not like, oh, my mom, you know, he's probably having a blast with all their kids and stuff. But it's a consideration. Yeah. I can't just flit off to L.A. or Miami or Las Vegas to shoot a scene, yeah. you know, and even when I'm gone, it's just like, you know, you're a mom. And to be that far away from your kid. I grew up and I was an adult like when 9-11 happened. Right. So for me to think about being too far away from my kiddo and if something happened. Yeah. Like I'm like, I would I would crawl on my hands and knees yeah. to get to him. Yeah. That's why I could never like be overseas. Yeah. Away from. And I think yeah. you get that being a mom. It's like the longest I was ever away from Violet was at the AVN show for four nights. And that was, you know, a 45 minute plane flight. Yeah. And my husband, you know, w- was with her. Right. He would take care of her. And I FaceTimed her every night and everything like that. But that was hard. Right. I mean, and my kid's not my kid's older. And he's said he's like, you know, you're overprotective. And I'm like, I know. But I am. Yeah. <laughs> and I accept that. And I'm OK with that. Yeah. Yeah. So studio work. Um, I don't know. You know? Let's see. Maybe. All right. All right, browsers, throw your offer on the table. You know, the funny thing is browsers did contact me hmm. about um, two years ago. Interesting. Almost, or, no, about a year and a half ago. And at the time, I think they were just like, I talked to somebody, I won't name her, but she was lovely. And I know uh, who you talked to. And and I was just like, I've never shot a boy-girl scene. And I think she was like, she. I think literally behind her eyes, she was probably like, I am talking to a 53 year old virgin right now, you know, <laughs> cause she was just like, eh. you know, yeah. like, ah, oh, well, gosh, if you haven't, you know, to set up a studio and to do that. And basically I was left with the feeling like she didn't say it, but it was like, yeah, I think you should get a few under your belt Yeah, before. Yeah. And I, I can get it. I mean, I'm sure you've had women that are backed out on set. I mean, has that happened? Oh yeah. 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 Well, not on set when they got there. It's just funny. Somebody asked me this in an interview the other night. The only time that I can recall that a woman literally like backed out of the scene um, and I had to send her home on set that day was for Playboy. Because just for Playboy. For Playboy because she didn't know she had to get naked. <laughs> and I was kind of like, there's literally nothing. Because this, remember when Playboy did that announcement yeah. that like we're no longer shooting nudity? Uh no. I don't okay. So they that. had this bit. This is like, this is before Half died. That, you know, they were like, the magazine was dying. Okay. They're like, okay, we're no longer shooting nudity. Made huge headlines because it's like, that's what Playboy is, right? So this, this girl had obviously seen those headlines. But of course, when they changed their mind and went back to nudity, that story didn't make headlines. Yeah. So a lot of people for a while thought that Playboy was still only non nude. Um, and she was one of those people. <laughs> So she set Surprise. up this shoot. She flew out from San Francisco and she's in the makeup chair. And I'm like talking to her about the shoot. And she's like, oh, wait, no, I, I didn't think I had to get naked. I'm like, girl, where do you think you are? This isn't a JC Penny ad. Oh my God. So you became like a cigar chomping, like casting card. I was like, listen, lady, if you're going to take your clothes off, you're going to have to go home. <laughs> no, I just, I was just like, I can't. I mean, obviously I called them. I'm like, she doesn't want to take her clothes off. They're like, well, we can't shoot her. Like, what are we going to do with the content? I'm like, I don't know. So, um, I mean, we had paid for her to fly out and stuff, so she didn't lose any money out of it. I think we might have even paid her a kill fee. I don't remember. It wasn't up to me. A kill fee? What's that? A kill fee is when you cancel the scene, but you still pay the people like something. Okay. So um, a lot of times a kill fee will be like if the shoot's canceled the morning of or the night before or something like that. It's like – you know, and you can't rebook a scene or whatever. So that, that's a kill fee. I love, that's the other thing I love about your podcast is I learn the vernacular mm. to the porn world. And I'm always like, ah, oh, yeah. okay. I yeah. love that. So yeah, that was literally the only time. I was like, well, like, <laughs> I mean, someone's got to get naked around here and it ain't going to be me. That's crazy. Cause I would think, um, I would think that you would have that more often because like when you're, it's kind of like going on an amusement ride that until you're like right there you know how you step there and you go oh this is scary you know and some people do back out yeah and they do stop so i'm 
Sometimes I will say it doesn't happen more often. I will say that I generally don't like to shoot new talents okay. that have never so done scenes probably, before. That's probably I, I, part of I, it. I usually don't because, you know, I, I want to sh- work with experienced people. Um, or if I'm shooting new talent, they've usually um, already done a couple, handful of other scenes with other companies because they've come through an agency or something like that. Um, I'm sure there's been a couple of times that I've shot somebody's first, but usually they've been in the industry for a bit. They've at least done solo. Maybe they've done girl, girl, and now this is their first boy, girl. Yeah. Do so. you see that um, that this industry is getting more friendly to, because it seems still pretty age, you know, like young mm-hmm. age. Do you see that mainstream porn is getting more friendly to older since MILF is such a huge category. 100%. I mean, did you see that Vixen just launched an entire new I saw brand, the, the MILFy? She's MILFy, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're all pretty young, even though they're still MILFs. They're not <laughs> over 50, you know? So, it's I mean, true. It is true. Like, the MILF age in porn, sometimes I've joked about it. It's just, like, how big are your lip fillers? Because I've shot yeah. 26-year-olds as, like, a, a mill for a stepmom. Yeah, and then I think because like they I, just look am, older. Am I, am I being coming up from the crypt? Because like I'm fifty six. <laughs> if if that is a mill, and I get it, they can be a mom. You yeah, know, like I get that. But I yeah. think, and I've talked to a friend of mine who's in mainstream porn. I won't mention her, but you should have her on your show. I'll tell, talk to you about that later. Um, and and she's younger. Um, but she's already, you know, in the MILF category. Yeah. And we've talked about it and, she, you know, we've both been like, yeah, why can't you just be an older woman? Like, why isn't there some acronym for older woman? And and I'm not ready to be a GILF yet, although that's coming, you mm-hmm. know, like I get it. And um, but I'd like to be 60 at least. I'm kind of thinking 60 is where six, maybe retirement, like 62 when I can get on Medicaid, Medicare, <laughs> Medicare. Maybe then I go. As soon as you can get your pension, you'll yeah, do the guilt like, for it. Yeah, like I think there should be that. And then I'm okay with that. But that's, you Maybe know. somebody should start a website called like Pension Pussy or something like that. Ooh, well, maybe you should because you just came up with it. I don't know though. Pension, pensions aren't as big as they were like 10, 20 years ago. Well, that's why they have to do porn. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> you know, but I mean, would I want to do it? I don't know. One of the things I do think about though, Holly, and I think, first of all, you know, in- in this town where you're at here, they have the, um, they have an senior living for old retired actors and stuff. Did you know that? Yes. Yes. In Calabasas. Yeah. It's, it's somewhere yes. right where I know. Um, I think I know exactly where it is. Like it's for retired, like entertainer, mm-hmm. people from the internet. Yeah. And I'm like, and I've talked to my friend Danny about this and I'm like, and, and it's Danny Jones is, is my good, real, real friend. And, um, we're like, we should have a retirement home for like, only fan and porn stars. But then you have to make like a reality show out of oh, it and fine. a whole like porn reality show. Fine. Are you kidding me? Can you that's can actually you a even, great that's a great script idea. Can you it's imagine, a retirement community for porn stars? It's golden girls, but they like but can't figure. stop fucking each other. Well, golden shower girls. No, no, we're not doing <laughs> anyone. Golden, no. Come on! No. I thought you were a no. visionary. No, that's what depends are for. Um <laughs> No, no, but we've already talked about this. I have told her and I've told other people, listen, when I am in the retirement home and I'm starting to lose it and I'm 80, I'm going to be having my Ryan and Lucas videos on a big screen TV on a loop. And I'll be like, oh my God, look at that. Look at that. And the CNAs, like the you know nurses are going to come in and they're going to be like, Oh, hey, Miss Elena, who have you got on today? And I'll be like, that was Lucas. (laughs) Isn't he cute? That's Ryan. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, he was Superman's porn, porn Superman. And I'll be like, yes. And they'll be like, this is such a weird place. But wouldn't that be great? A retirement home for porn stars? I love it. I love it. And we we wouldn't have to hide. There'd be no stigma. There'd be no shame. It's the ultimate utopia. And think of all, like, look at all the, like, probably younger guys that would want to work there. All yeah. the people that would probably want to work there. So I, you, you, you just wrote a movie. I know. You just wrote a right? movie. Now you got to go home, finish up the script, start a Kickstarter. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I mean, we're still, we're still vital. I mean, I'm 56, but I still feel like sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. that I'm in this business, that I'm so much older. But Why not? Yeah. Why not have, that would be, a, it would be a great movie. It would be a good retire. well, 
they have the villages, right? Mm-hmm. But they're not retired porn stars. That's right. what would be the difference. Yeah. Retired porn stars. Yeah. That would be awesome. Well, I feel like if anyone can make it happen, it's you. <laughs> so are you. <laughs> so before we wrap this up, um, I just want to have you tell us, like, what is the message that you want to get out there? Because I know you are very much about, like, empowerment um and you do come with a strong message and i know that in your email to me you said you want to stress that it's never too late to begin again what does that mean to you it really means that so one of my main guiding posts in life is um there is luck but really what luck is is when preparation and opportunity meet Mm -hmm. that's luck when those things meet. So what that tells me is, yes, there is there is a randomness. There's a luck thing. Some people call it destiny. But you have to be ready to seize it. I've taken calculated risks my whole life. Um, and to me, that means that you have to be ready to take that calculated risk. And that even if you're stuck at age 50, did I ever think I'd be doing this? I'm here with you. I was a nobody, you know, I was just, a. I was somebody, I was somebody's mom. And I'll tell you what, that, that is more important than anything I will ever do in my life. And it was one of the reasons I do what I do, you know, as we've talked about, but I never would have thought that my best years, that my glory years were going to be in my mid to late fifties. Are you kidding me? So My message is, I don't know. I don't know what's going on for you or you because you're still young. I don't know what's going on for anybody in their life. And it might not be OnlyFans. It probably isn't OnlyFans. But it's going to be something. Something is going to come to you. Maybe you're going to be like a pro bass fisherman or something. Or it's a technology that doesn't even exist right now. You might be a 35-year-old mom at home with three kids, and you might be, damn, my life's over. Like, this is it. It's never going to be better. I'm with a guy that I'm not really even in love with anymore, whatever. No, it's not over. It's not over. Your best days might be when you're 55 years old, and all of a sudden, you're living this life where you're making money, where you have a platform to talk to people about what your life could be just be open. I never would have thought that OnlyFans was what it was going to be, but I was asking the universe to bring me something, something that could change my life for the better. The universe presented itself with something I never would have guessed. So that's the whole thing. People that are watching this, you might be 60, you might be 65, something. Maybe it's even a hobby that just brings you absolute complete joy something is around the corner for you if you keep believing and keep open to the possibility that can change your life for the better and can be your best days yeah in the future yeah yeah well alina thank you so much it's been such a pleasure to have you You're i really welcome. appreciate thank it thank you so much for having me on of course this is so crazy <laughs> it's like being on with johnny carson back in the day <laughs> i know except i don't have a band it doesn't matter i need a band you have joe ernie can we throw a drum roll in here or something <laughs> for little old me <laughs> can you tell everyone where they can find you online oh yeah elena st james.com is always the best i have the domain and anybody in this business should have their own domain. So E L A I N A S T J A M E S. So Elena St. James, same on Twitter, same on Instagram. I do have several Instagram. Be careful of scammers. Um, I'm on TikTok, I'm on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, they're all Elena St. James. Dot- or Elena St. James. Um, My TikTok is Elena underscore St. James. I'm sure they'll pull that from me soon, so I probably won't exist on TikTok (laughs) soon, but I do now. You know, I have been saying that for a long time, yet I am still on TikTok, and you can find me there 
at Holly Randall Unfiltered. And like Elena said, go to hollylinks.com to find links to all of my profiles because that is the easiest way to find me. I am on Instagram at Holly Randall, though I'm so fucking shadow banned. If you type in instagram.com slash Holly Randall, it says I don't exist, which isn't true. You do. I I so exist. Instagram, (laughs) I exist. Don't try to make me feel like I don't. Um, on Twitter, I'm at Holly Randall. And of course, if you want to watch these interviews live, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>